friends. Happy Wednesday. I have a special note for you today. Um, I wanted to write it on my board and it says, believe in yourself always. And I want you to know that I will always believe in you. Even though that we don't get to finish the year out together um, and you guys are moving on to middle school next year, I will still wonder about you and think about you and wonder how you're doing. Even years from now, I know that um, you guys, especially being my very first group of kiddos that I could call my own um, in my first year of teaching, I know that I will remember you guys forever and I will always believe in you and I want you to know that you guys are all going to do really big things someday, and I can't wait to sit back and see what all you guys accomplish. Um, we are ready to start with Chapter 15 today. I think that we can get through at least a couple chapters today. Um, when we left off yesterday, Georgina was in a little bit of a predicament. She um, skipped school so that she could go check on Willie, and she found a homeless guy at the house that she's got Willie staying at, so um, everything went okay, but now she's worried that um, someone's going to find out about the dog, or that Toby's going to blow it and tell their mom. Um, she just keeps saying that she's going to wait and, ha and see what happens next, so I want us to start off at chapter 15. Okay, now, listen, Toby. I took him by the shoulders and looked him straight in the eye. Then I gave him a little shake just to make sure I had his attention. There might be a man back there with Willie. I jerked my head in the direction of the old house. Toby's eyes got wide. Who, he said. A man named Mookie. A man named Mookie? I nodded, but it's okay, I said. He's nice. He gave Willie some sardines. Well, what's he doing back there? Toby said. I shrugged. Just like kind of living there, I guess. Toby glanced nervously at the house. Well, how'd he get in? Not inside, I said. He's living outside. Out in the back where Willie is. You mean like a bum? I kept my hands on Toby's shoulders and made him face me so he'd pay attention. Look, Toby, I said. He's liable to be gone, but just in case he's there, don't be scared, okay? Okay, he said. I dropped my hands from Toby's shoulders and started toward the house. Hey, wait a minute, Toby said, grabbing the back of my t-shirt. How do you know about a man named Mookie there? He stomped his foot on the gravel road. You came out here without me, he said. I had to, I said. When? Yesterday. Yesterday, I pulled my arm around him and gave him a little jiggle. Look, Toby, I just did it without thinking, because I needed to see Willie, okay? I'm sorry. Toby looked down at his feet. I jiggled him again. Okay, I said. Finally, in a little tiny voice, he said, okay, I won't do it ever again. Pinky promise, he said. I gave my pinky to him. Pinky promise. We linked pinkies, then headed toward the house. I sure hoped Mookie was gone. We hadn't even got to the corner of the house before Willie started barking. It's me, I called out. Georgina and Toby, Toby called out from behind me. When I rounded the corner, the first thing I saw was a blue tarp. Underneath it, Mookie was stretched out on top of his sleeping bag, his hands folded on his stomach and his hat over his face. From over on the back steps, Willie jiggled his whole body and let out a bark like he was saying hello. Mookie didn't move. Mookie, I said, kind of soft-like so I wouldn't scare him. Nothing. Mookie, I said a little louder. Still nothing. Is he dead? Toby whispered. Suddenly, Mookie let out a snort and jumped, sending his hat flying and making me and Toby grab each other. Mookie slapped a hand over his heart and plopped back down on his sleeping bag. You like to scared the Bessie bug out of me, he said. I brought Willie some stuff to eat, I said, wagging my paper bag in the air. Mookie sat up and put his hat on. Me and him's been having liver pudding. I wrinkled my nose. What's that? Liver pudding? Mookie rubbed his hand in a circle on his stomach. 
Some good eating, that's what. Right, Willie? Willie sat on the porch steps and lifted a paw. Looky chuckled. That dog's got good taste, I tell you. He nodded toward Toby. Who's he? My brother, Toby. Looky got up and held out his three-fingered hand toward Toby. I'd forgotten to warn Toby about that, but for once in his life, he didn't even act like a scaredy baby. He shook Mookie's hand like he didn't even notice those missing fingers. It's a darn shame about that landlord of yours, ain't it? Mookie said to Toby. Toby looked at me and then looked back at Mookie. Yes, sir, it is. I felt relief flood over me. Toby wasn't going to say something stupid like he usually did. I bet you all sure do miss your little dog, don't you? Mookie said. We sure do, I said. Toby nodded. Yes, sir, we do. Mookie rolled his sleeping bag up and stuffed it into the crate on the back of his bicycle. Kind of hard to sleep around him, though, ain't it? I looked over at Willie. He looked back at me with his shiny little eyes and his eyebrows lifted up like he was curious as anything to hear what I was going to say. I shrugged. Sometimes, I said. Mookie wiped a plastic coffee mug with his shirt tail and put it into a burlap bag. He snore like that all the time, he said. Not all the time. Mookie chuckled and put a few more things inside his burlap bag. Then he tucked it into the crate beside the sleeping bag. Are you leaving? I said. I sure hoped he was. Yep. Good, I thought. Now I could concentrate on what I had to do. Mookie pushed his bike toward the path leading out the road. What about that? I said, pointing up at the blue tarp. Oh, I'll be back, he said. Me and Toby watched him disappear around the corner of the house. A few seconds later, the sound of the gravelly singing echoed through the woods and faded away. Is he a bum, Toby said. I don't know. I sat on the step beside Willie and let him root around inside the paper bag. He pulled out a chunk of bagel and gobbled it down. I bet he is, Toby said. I stroked Willie's head while he ate the rest of the scraps I had brought him. Except a slice of tomato. He didn't like that. He just sniffed it. Don't you think he's a bum? Toby said. How should I know? I snapped. I don't like him, Toby said. He smells bad. So do you, I hollered, making Willie jump off my lap and slink away like I just smacked him upside the head. Well, so do you, Toby hollered back. Why was I being so mean to Toby? Maybe I figured if I was mean to Toby, I'd feel better about things. But I didn't. Let's just go take Willie for a walk, I said. The next day, Mama made Toby stay at the coffee shop and do his homework over in the corner booth by the kitchen. He had whined and carried on, but it hadn't done him a bit of good. So now I was finally free to be by myself and figure things out. First, I had to visit Carmela and find out if she had gotten any money from her sister Gertie. I hurried up the sidewalk toward Whitmore Road. It seemed like the world had blossomed overnight. Bright pink azaleas, white dogwood. The air smelled sweet like clover. I had the urge to take my shoes off and run barefoot across the soft green lawns, but I didn't. When I got to Carmela's, I waited outside the gate. The yard was quiet, not even any birds at the feeder. For a minute, I wished I could step back into time. Back to the day when Willie had come running around the side of the house chasing that squirrel before I had done what I'd done, but I couldn't. So I made my feet go up on the porch and my hand knock on the screen door. Who is it? Carmela called from inside. It's me, Georgina. I heard her wheezing as she came to unlatch the screen. Hey, I said. Hey. I looked down at the floor and said, did anybody find Willie? Carmela shook her head and sank into her ratty old chair. The TV was on with no sound. One of those shopping shows where some lady tries to get you to buy a great big ring. It's not even a real diamond. The lady wriggled, wiggled her fingers around, making the fake diamond sparkle from the camera. Well, what about Gertie? I said. Carmela shook her head again. What am I going to do? She said in this flat kind of voice that made me feel sort of scared. I sat on the ottoman across from her. What did Gertie say? She says she hasn't got the money, but I know good and well she does. 
Carmela wiped her nose with her hand and stared at the TV. She says I'm pathetic for getting all worked up over a silly little dog. So what are you going to do? I'm thinking I'll just go ahead and offer what I can. How much is that? Carmela sighed. Oh, I don't know. Fifty dollars, maybe. My stomach went sunk. But you put five hundred dollars on all those signs, I said. I know. Carmela blew her nose. Maybe whoever finds Willie won't care about money. She stuffed the tissue into her pocket. I sure wouldn't, she said. Would you? I shrugged. Uh, well, sort of. I mean, not really, but with every word that came out of my mouth, I felt like I was digging myself into a hole, and if I didn't stop, I was going to be so far in, I would never climb out. Me and Carmela stared at the TV in silence. Now that lady was dangling in a shiny gold necklace in front of the camera. Her bright red lips were moving, and I tried to imagine what she was saying. But my mind was such a mixed up mess that this, that instead of imagining her saying how wonderful that necklace was, I imagined her saying, Georgina Hayes, what in the world are you doing? Have you lost your mind? You bring that little dog back here this instant. I looked at Carmela and felt a stab. What in the world was I doing? Then suddenly Carmela leaned in forward and said, Georgina, will you do me a favor? Sure. Will you and Toby go check those woods over there across the highway? What woods? I said. Over yonder. She waved her arm toward the main highway, toward the gravel road, toward the old house. You'll probably think I'm plum crazy, she said, but sometimes I think I hear Willie barking from over there. Thunk. There went my stomach again. Really? I said. I drove around over that way yesterday, she said, but I thought maybe you and Toby could look too. Okay. Of course, I think I hear Willie scampering around this house too, Carmela said, so I reckon it's just my crazy old mind playing tricks on me. Toby's doing homework at my mama's coffee shop, I said, but I'll go look. Carmela smiled. I sure do appreciate everything y'all have done for me. I shrugged. Eh, that's okay. I started for the door. Besides, maybe if we do find Willie, Gertie will change her mind and give us $500. Carmela's smile dropped, and she looked like I just told her the sky had turned purple. What do you mean, she said. Well, um, I mean, you know, the reward and all. Oh, Carmela looked down at her hands and twisted a button on her shirt. I guess I thought you and Toby were helping me because you wanted to. We are. I said. I mean, we do want to. I just thought, but I will certainly do my best to make sure you get paid for your kindness. Carmela's chin was puckering up, and she didn't even want to look at me. Darn, I thought. That hole I dug myself into was getting deeper by the minute. I wonder if Carmela knows that they actually hid the dog there. Let's see. Chapter 16. As soon as I got to the house, I knew Mookie was back. First, I saw his bicycle propped against the bushes on the side. Then, I caught a whiff of something cooking. He looked up when I came around the corner. Hey there, he said. Hey, I went straight on over to Willie and gave him the bacon I brought. I'm glad you brought that, Mookie said, because he's been eyeing my Hoover gravy like he was going to eat it all and then think too. I squinted into the pan Mookie held over a small fire in a ring of rocks. A pale gray liquid bubbled and smoked in the pan. What is that? I said. Hoover gravy, Mookie said. Want some? No thanks. I watched him dip a slice of bread into the watery liquid and eat it. Yuck. Where's Toby? Mookie said. Doing his homework with my mom. Ain't you got homework? I sat on the steps and pulled Willie into my lap. A little. I picked some burrs out of Willie's fur. But I don't need help like Toby does. He's not very smart. Bookie sopped up another piece of bread and the watery gravy. Smart ain't got a thing to do with school, he said. I never went past sixth grade myself. He ate the soggy bread then added, and I'm pretty smart. He licked his fingers. Besides, he said, 
If you ask me, school's about as useful as a trapdoor on a canoe. You can't get a job if you don't go to school, I said. Says who? Says everybody. I work every day of my life, he said. Where? Everywhere. Like where, I said. Everywhere, he repeated. I frowned down at Willie and ran my finger over the velvety fur on his nose. Bookie was crazy. Why was I even talking to him? Then how come you live like a bum, I said. I felt my face burn. I shouldn't have said that. But Mookie just laughed. I said I worked. I didn't say I got paid for it. You work for free? Sometimes he took the pan off the fire and scooped the dirt over the flames. How come? I said. He tied the end of the bread bag in a knot, then leaned back against his rolled up sleeping bag. Why not? He said. What kind of work do you do? Whatever I come across that needs to be done, he said. Might be fixing a roof, might be painting, might be digging ditches. He wiggled his three-fingered hand at me. Might even be fixing tractor engines, he nodded. You do that for free? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. He took a toothpick out of his shirt pocket and stuck it in the corner of his mouth. But why would you do that stuff for free? Because sometimes people need stuff done more than I need the money, he said. That sounded crazy, but I didn't say so. It looked to me like he could use some money. Mookie took his baseball hat off and scratched his fuzzy gray hair. Besides, he said, I got a motto. You want to hear it? I shrugged. Sometimes the trail you leave behind you is more important than the path ahead of you. He put his hat back on. You got a motto? He said. I shook my head. Nope. He stuck his finger in the gravy. Okay, little fella, he said to Willie. It's cool enough for you now. He slid the pan toward the steps, and Willie ran down and lapped up the gravy. Clumps of gooey flour stuck to the bottom of the pan, and he licked them too. Then Mookie took me by surprise when he said, Ain't your mama found you a new place to live yet? Not yet, I said, but she's working on it. You know... I saw the strangest thing today, Mookie said. I saw a little old son with a dog that looked just like yours. I swear when he said that, my heart sank right down to my feet. Like Willie? Mookie nodded. Yep. I couldn't even look at Mookie. And you know what was even stranger, he said. I swallowed hard and made myself say, what? That dog's name was Willie, too. Mookie grinned at me, flashing that gold tooth of his. Ain't that something? I looked down at Willie, still licking the pen. Yes, sir, I said, surprised at how my voice came out so low and shaky. Mookie switched the toothpick over to the other side of his mouth and chewed on it. I looked down at the ground and traced circles of dirt with the toe of my shoe. I never thought I'd say it, but I wish I was back in our ratty old car. Snuggled up in the back seat, hugging my pillow. I better go, I said, giving Willie a quick pat on the head. Bye now. I felt Mookie's eyes on me as I walked toward the side of the house. Just as I was about to round the corner, he called out, Hey, Georgina. I stopped. I got another motto, he said. You want to hear it? He didn't even wait for me to answer. Sometimes, he said, the more you stir it, the worse it stinks. I turned and hurried up the path to the road. When I got back to the car, I took out my purple notebook. I slouched down and propped my feet up on the dashboard. I opened to how to steal a dog. April 25th, I wrote, step seven. I stared out the window, tapping the pencil against my teeth. I looked down at the paper and wrote, remember. I looked out the window again, then back at the paper. I drew a box under the word, remember. Inside the box, I wrote, sometimes the more you stir it, the worse it stinks. Then I closed my notebook, climbed into the back seat, hugged my pillow, and waited for Mama and Toby. So let's continue with chapter 17. So I think that, well, I, it's clear that Mookie has figured out what Georgina is doing with that dog. It seems like he knows that it's not really Georgina's dog. 
I knew my day was going to be bad when Kirby Price called me a dirtbag in gym and everybody laughed. Even Luann, I saw her. And then it got worse. When Mama got off work that night, the car wouldn't start. She turned the key and there was just one little click and then nothing. Well, that's great, she said, pounding her fist on the steering wheel. Me and Toby looked at each other, but we both knew better than to say anything. She turned the key again. Click. She flopped back against the seat and said a cuss word. Toby giggled and I poked him to be quiet. My life just goes from bad to worse, Mama said. Then she just then she sat there staring out the window at the Chinese restaurant across the street. A family came out, a real family, a mom, a dad, and two kids. They broke open their fortune cookies and read their fortunes out loud while they walked to their car. They all smiled and laughed and acted like they had the best life in the world. When they drove by us, they were still laughing. They didn't even look at us sitting in our car that wouldn't start. Man, I wished I was one of those kids eating my fortune cookie and laughing with my family. Mama turned the key again. Click. I stared out the window praying that old car would start. And then I couldn't hardly believe my eyes. There was Mookie pedaling his bike up the road toward us. I ducked down real quick and motioned for Toby to get down too. Naturally, he had to go, what, and sit there looking stupid. I grabbed his t-shirt and yanked him down. Then I peeked out the window. Bookie had gone past us and disappeared around the corner. Mama turned the key again. Click. I finally got up the courage to say this. What are we going to do now? I held my breath, hoping she wouldn't yell at me, because I didn't need that after that dirtbag stuff at school. Mama shook her head and let out a big whoosh of a sigh that blew her hair up off her forehead. She turned the key again. Click. I guess we're sleeping here tonight, she said. I looked around us at all the places where there were people who could see us. The Chinese restaurant, the Quickie Mart, the Chevron gas station. Well, what if somebody sees us, I said. Y'all go on over there to the gas station and wash up, Mama said. I'm going in the Quickie Mart to get us something to eat. I watched her run across the street, her jeans dragging on the ground. What if somebody sees us? I hollered out the window, but Mama didn't even turn around. The next morning, Mama walked over to the coffee shop to get her friend Patsy to drive me and Toby to school. I liked to die when I saw Patsy pull up beside our car roll down her window and say, come on y'all. She had a big poopy hairdo that stuck way up on top of her head and ugly sparkly earrings and a cigarette hanging out of her big red lips. Her car was rustier than ours with bumpy bumper stickers all over the back. My other car is a broom, honk if you love Jesus and stuff like that. I climbed in the back seat and slouched down as low as I could. Please don't let anybody see me, I prayed, especially Kirby Price. Just before we got to school, Patsy said, Look at that! Me and Toby looked where she was pointing. There was Mookie pedaling alongside of the road on that rusty old bike of his, just the little American flag waving in the breeze. I've seen that man all over town, Patsy said. He sure looks happy, don't he? I slouched back down in the seat and turned my face away from the window. I sure wish Mookie would get out on out of Darby instead of hanging around like he was. Imagine being that happy when all you got in the world is a beat up old bicycle, Patsy said. When we passed him, she waved out the window and hollered, Hey! Mookie tipped his hat. After school, me and Toby had to walk back to the car. It took forever, and Toby kept gripping and hollering. Wait up, Georgina. Then he kept asking, when are we going to take Willie back to Carmela's? I pretended like I didn't hear him. Finally, he grabbed my backpack and yanked. I said, when are we going to take Willie back to Carmela's? I whirled around to face him. I don't know, Toby, okay? I started off up the sidewalk again. Toby trotted along beside me. She's looking for him, Georgina, he said. I know. I bet Willie wants to go home. I know. Maybe Carmela has some money now. Maybe Gertie gave her some. I stopped. Look, Toby, I said. I've got to figure this thing out. We went to all this trouble to steal that dog, 
So we might as well get some money out of it, right? Toby shrugged. I guess. What do you mean you guessed, I said. That's the whole reason we got ourselves into this mess in the first place. What mess? I started walking again, but Toby grabbed my arm. What mess, Georgina, he said. Are we in trouble? No, we're not in trouble. Then what mess? Look, Toby, I said. Carmela may not even get any money. If we take Lily back now, we probably won't get anything. But if we make, wait much longer, well, I don't know. What'll happen if we wait much longer, Toby said. Georgina, is Carmela going to call the police? No. But what if she does? So? So? We might get arrested. We're kidnappers, Toby said. We are not. Well, dog nappers then. Toby's face was puckering up like he was going to cry. What if we have to go to jail, he said. Shut up, Toby. There's no such thing as dog nappers. I hated it when Toby started thinking stuff up I should have thought of. Maybe we were dog nappers. Maybe we could go to jail. I pictured Willie's face on a milk carton. His head cocked and his ears perked up. Have you seen me? It would say underneath. And Carmela would be sitting there at the kitchen table with her Cheerios, looking at Willie and crying her eyes out. And what about Willie? Toby interrupted my thought. Think about him, he said. I bet he's sadder than anything. Shut up, Toby, I said. I sure didn't need Toby heaping more bad feelings on top of me like that. Neither one of us said another road as we made our way along Jackson Road toward the car. Toby kept on finding things on the ground and saying, Hey, look what I found. A quarter, a cigarette lighter, a pencil. Then, right before we got to the car, we came to one of those lost dog signs with Willie's cute little face smiling out at us. I shut my eyes until we were all the way past it, but I could still feel him looking at me. When we finally saw the car, Toby darted ahead. Hey, look at that, he said, pointing to the ground. I looked down at a shiny quarter nestled in the sandy roadside next to our car. And then I noticed something else. Tracks in the sand. Tire tracks bicycle tire tracks. But Toby didn't seem to notice. He just grabbed that quarter like it was made out of gold. I shuffled my feet in the sand, making those tire tracks disappear. Then I unlocked the door and climbed in the back seat. Me and Toby stayed in the car all afternoon, eating graham crackers with jelly and playing Crazy Eight. Toby kept asking me when we were going to take Willie back to Carmela, but I didn't even answer him. I knew that was making him mad as all get out, but too bad. I didn't even want to talk about Willie and Carmilla. I didn't even want to think about Willie and Carmilla. I had this bad, bad feeling that I'd gotten myself into a mess, and it seemed like everything I did stirred up that mess even more. Stirred it up so much that it was starting to stink. And that concludes chapter 17. So tomorrow we will pick up with chapter 18, the rest of the chapters look pretty short, so if we don't finish it tomorrow, we will definitely be able to finish it by Friday, and we will see what ends up happening. If Carmela finds out, or if they return the dog safely and get the reward, I don't know. I'm curious to see. I've actually not read the ending, so it's going to be new to me, just like you guys. So um, thank you guys again for keeping up and watching Today, remember, this counts as your 30 minutes of reading for today. So make sure that you join me tomorrow and Friday. And remember, on Monday, we will be starting a new book called Bridge to Terabithia. I'm super excited about that. I hope that you guys will be able to get out and enjoy the sunshine today. I'm looking forward to that. I think the dogs and I are going to go on a walk in a little bit. So I will, they just heard me say it. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.